turn red and just tell me it's recording. There we go. So we are now recording the session. Um, the, the recording will be up on the webinar shortly after the, the webinar ends. Um, and at this point, I'm going to turn the session over to Joe Wickens, who is the manager for document delivery services at Dalhousie University, and he's going to introduce our speakers. Joe. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, well, right off the bat, I think I will um, read the territorial acknowledgement. Um, call CBPA represents member libraries across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of First Peoples. In Newfoundland and Labrador, our, labor our libraries sit on the homelands of the Inuit, of Nutatsivut, and the Nunatukavut, the Inuit Tassinen, the Biotak, and the Mi'kmaq peoples. In Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. In New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Wagath, Sequiak, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy peoples. We at Call CBPA wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the First Peoples who share their ancestral homelands with us all. And with that, uh, well, I. <laughs> I don't know if these people need any introduction, but our, our friends, uh, certainly the topic is is one that's it's very um, uh, topical. Uh, there are a lot of changes, of course, as we all know, in the uh, in the in the field of, of uh, ILL um, uh, automation and uh, our friends in at Memorial, as they so often do, it seems, have taken the lead and uh, are out uh, forging ahead with one of those products, um, Rapido. Uh, I believe that's the correct pronunciation. And uh, anyway, today's brown bag will be um, them sharing uh, with us their experiences with this new exciting product. So with that, take it away. Thanks, Joe. I will share our slides there now. Do Perfect, and everyone can see that okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Joe said, we're gonna be speaking about um, our experience within Rapido as our new system. Uh, I'm Katie uh, at the Health Sciences Library here at Memorial. Um, Krista Ryan unfortunately sends her regrets. Uh, we also have Becky Smith, who is our Rapido system admin, also in St. John's, and Kit Stone is joining us from Cornerbrook at the Grenfell Library. So I'm going to pass it over to Becky, and she's going to give us all an introduction into what is Rapido. Very good. Thanks, Katie. If you want to put it on the on the next slide, it's it's a little bit of a text uh, heavy slide. I will acknowledge whether it's Rapido, Rapido, you hear both pronunciations, uh, both seem to be acceptable, uh, even from Ex Libra staff, so don't worry about which uh, which pronunciation you choose. Just know that it's, it's the system we're talking about today. So when we're talking about Rapido, I don't want to sound too much like an Ex Libra employee, but basically it is meant to be a next generation system. It's one that is trying to improve the resource sharing system uh, to improve both the user experience uh, when interacting with resource sharing, but also the staff experience. So the improved user experience is something where we're trying to present more information upfront to the user at the time of the request, uh, because traditionally many of these services have often been almost a black box, depending on how you were using it. There wasn't always a lot of information available and visible to the user. When it comes to the staff side of things, um, there's a certain amount of automation that is included to increase the efficiency of processing requests and which will hopefully lead to quicker fill times of the requests. Rapido is uh, also something that is using a concept of load balancing to try and 
help balance out the number of requests when you're looking at borrowing versus lending. So currently, it is a system that is an add-on to Alma. So when when you're in Alma, um, if you're if you've got a Rapido subscription, it is something that is almost kind of indistinguishable from other aspects of of Alma. Um, but if you don't have it, it means that the base underlying resource sharing module of Alma is uh, is what you'd be using. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Ex Libris does have plans to make Rapido a standalone product. Uh, if my memory is correct, I believe that might be as early as next year uh, and early next year. So it may be possible for institutions that do not have Alma to be able to have Rapido as well. Um, so I have kind of mentioned already this uh, focus on the improved user experience. And basically, it is a perspective of wanting to be able to direct staff time to requests that need more attention. So if you've got a request that is, you know, well filled out, doesn't need, uh, doesn't, doesn't need anything else in the information that uh, is needed in order to locate the item, then, hey, this request might actually look after itself in some respects. And that leaves staff with the ability to focus on those requests where you might need to hunt down a little bit more information or you might need to take a few more efforts to locate the item. Um, and as I say, the, the balancing of the load of requests between borrowing and lending. So, a lot of people get really confused with Rapido because, well, it sounds like another system, which is Rapid ILL. And just for clarification, Rapid ILL was a previously existing system. I believe both DAL and UNB have had it for a number of years. Um, and Rapido is actually uh, a product. It, they did get bought by Ex Libris. <laughs> So that's that's now an Ex Libris product. And what Ex Libris is doing is rolling the concepts of Rapid ILL into Rapido, into a more holistic system. So Rapid ILL is one where you, as an institution, are joining a pod or a group of other participating libraries often these are similar institutions to yourself, to provide reciprocal borrowing of materials. And generally, you're, you're agreeing to the same terms of uh, providing service. With this Rapid ILL system, it's been primarily designed for sharing of electronic documents, whether it's your uh, book chapter or your journal article. Um, and so it means that, yes, all of this is happening digitally and considering a lot of our subscriptions are digital in nature, actually going and getting that document and sharing it with somebody else means it's a very quick process. And so there is a um, that agreement for the terms of service for the digital item that an institution is going to agree to either acknowledge that they are going to provide the digital item or that they actually do provide the digital item within 24 hours. And I'm sure institutions that um, do have rapid ILL have experienced just how quickly some documents can be delivered uh, based on, on this system. So, Rapido, I want to say on the other hand, but uh, as, as an extension, is a service that is actually using Rapid ILL. A part of Rapido is Rapid ILL. This comes with your Rapido subscription, but Rapido is meant to extend the functionality to be able to handle requests for physical materials. 
And so this is a scenario of you have your rapid ILL pods to look after your digital lending. And with Rapido, you are joining pods of institutions that are agreeing to deliver materials physically. And again, you are agreeing to certain terms of service. What this means is that if you are requesting a digital item, the uh, programming that's going on in the background is if you've got a good citation, everything is set up so that it goes and looks for who can supply that. And that request will actually go off to that library with potentially no staff intervention on, on our side, on, uh, on the borrowing side, goes off to the lending library. If everything's great, they provide it back. And the request will actually go straight to the user. Again, there's no staff intervention when, it, uh, when it's coming back. So that, as I mentioned, these digital requests can often be filled within 24 hours. And I think we've had some that have been filled within like just a couple of hours. Uh, so that's a pretty, pretty good turnaround. When it comes to the request for physical items, Again, we're using some separate pods of participating partner libraries and the terms of service that we are agreeing to in these pods are indicating how long something may be borrowed for, what time frame we are expecting the item to be delivered in, and if there are any renewals. These attributes are being agreed to ahead of time so that when we are actually looking and showing information to our user about this item, the information about how long they can borrow something for and how quickly they can get it is actually displayed to the user at the time of the request in the discovery system. So they have an idea of what to expect right from the beginning. Uh, Katie, next slide, please. So I do want to acknowledge that Rapido is still a developing product and thus the network of libraries is also something that is being built. Um, but it does, since some of those networks are small at the moment, you do have other means to fill out your network of sharing. So we've got these Rapido pods and it might be possible depending on the participants in a given pod to meet with those institutions to say hey we want to join but we don't know if we can meet the terms of service that are outlined here and so there can be a negotiation to uh, make the pods suitable for more people or perhaps a new pod gets created as well. This is one of the benefits of Rapido is as new members are joining pods, your network is going to update automatically and you won't you won't have some of the extra steps in setup of trying to work with partner information and trying to go through some of the, the technical trials and errors that uh, might happen if you are looking to put in partners of your own. Right now, uh, as far as I'm aware, the Rapido pods are only for Rapido subscribers. So this is uh, in terms of that physical lending side of things. That's what we're looking at. But Rapido is currently a service built on top of Alma's native resource sharing functionality. So it does have some overlap with this and it does 
provide you with the other means to connect with other partners beyond the Rapido pods. So if you'll remember um, about a week or a little bit more, um, we put out there that there was uh, an ex-labor se session for the resource sharing directory. And hopefully many of you had an opportunity to either attend or view that since. Um, but this is a prime way where all the libraries can aid the setup of partners for other institutions uh, so that all of that information, what you'd normally share back and forth in some emails is something that you just download in Alma and everything should hopefully be hunky dory. This, infor this information that is downloaded, both partners have to be in place, meaning that just because someone downloads you as a partner does not mean that resource sharing is going to happen without you knowing about it. Both parties do need to agree and both parties need to have the other in their uh, in their partners list in Alma in order to uh, to make this work. Um, let me see where I lost my place. <laughs> but it does it does make everything a lot easier. Any Alma library can uh, set up resource sharing via Alma. So it is the scenario of even if they're not Rapido partners, you can still work with them. So for example, um, many of the, or actually all of the OCL libraries in Ontario, uh, they have moved to Alma resource sharing. Uh, one of them is also a Rapido member and they are all partners uh, with MUN uh, as we did some testing and helped them get set up. And with Rapido, I actually have the ability to kind of turn them into their own pods so that I can make the experience of borrowing from them a little bit more like Rapido. It is important to understand that, yes, there are other um, out there that still, um, you know, still are valued systems and that depending on what your needs are, maybe some of your requests are for materials that cannot yet be filled with a network of Alma institutions. That's OK. There is the ability currently to, I'm skipping down a little bit in the slide here, um, but there is the ability to push requests from Rapido or Alma Resource Sharing out to Relay. I believe uh, many of you in NovaNet are probably already uh, using this. And depending on your settings, you might have some information about that uh, borrowing come back to uh, to the system, but also you can push out requests to WorldShare as well. Um, only in that instance, there is no information that comes from WorldShare back into Rapido. Ex Libris is working with um, OCLC folks with the WorldShare and Tapasa platforms so that you can share so that you can use Alma or Rapido and someone else can use WorldShare and Tapasa like the Quebec libraries and have the communication work properly. That's still in progress. It's not working 100% uh, just yet. And the status of doing the same thing with Relay is currently uncertain. I've not had any updates to this for a number of months now. Um, so Katie, next slide here. So just to give a very quick and brief um, example of what it looks like for our users, I have done a search here for tourism and entrepreneurship, uh, international perspectives. This is just our regular um, Primo experience when people use uh, just a regular search. But 
Um, it's not, I, all I see is a book review here. I don't see the book. Uh, so click once, Katie. And we get a box around the text of expand your search beyond MUN libraries. So next slide, please. By following that particular link, I have now got an entry for this particular book. In addition to that book review, there were some other results down below that as well, but the first two results are actually quite promising. Next slide. When I actually go into the record for it, it's yes, it acknowledges that it's not in the library, but this display here of the get it from other libraries is what is typical for the uh, experience of being able to request a copy. You get a nice tile for the copy, nice tile for the chapter. Uh, next slide. And because all of the metadata is being pulled from the item itself, very little to fill in. Next slide. And depending on if you wanted a chapter, slightly different form that allows you to enter the chapter information. And next click. And once you actually hit the send button, you've got a green banner indicating that the request was successfully submitted. Uh, next slide. And once you're in Primo and you go to the My Library card, you can then see the various steps that this has reached. So I placed a request for the physical item. We can see that it's being processed. We can see that the lender has not come into it yet, but we'll see when it's shipped and when it's received. So that's a very brief um, uh, example of what it looks like for the user. I'm going to turn it over to Kit, but just before I do, I do want to acknowledge that um, some of what Kit and Katie are going to be showing you are a scenario of some of these things are out of the box settings. Some of these things are um, aspects that we have customized locally for our own um, our own circumstance. And you might be able to choose different wording, choose whatever makes you happy. Kit. Thank you very much, Becky. OK, uh, if we could go to the next slide, Katie. So Relay users uh, know that uh, we have all of these random queues that are created by Relay and we have not, we don't really have a lot of control over that. But the great thing about um, Rapido is that we can create sets and control our queues, control our lists. So when you open um, the resource sharing uh, drop down list, it gives you two tabs, borrowing and lending. And so under the borrowing tab, we can see we've got three categories. So we have brand new requests, in process requests, and closed requests. And we'll notice that at the very top of, outside of those categories, there's an all active borrowing requests list. So that set actually includes every new request, every active loan, every request waiting to be filled. So if it hasn't been closed, it, it comes up in that list. Um, if we could just skip ahead there, Katie. Okay, so now with the sets, you can actually create sets that make your workflow work. So if I go into the all active list, borrowing request list, I can turn on a filter and I can filter the list to anything that I want. And then I can apply that filter and then where you can see the green arrow pointing, I can save it as a new set. If we can go ahead, Katie. So when I save it as a new set, a window pops up so I can uh, create a set name for it. I can add a description in if I want to. I can decide if it's going to go under the new or in process or closed sets. I can make it private so that that set is only for me. That has to do with my workflow. No one else needs to see that list but me. Or I can make it public so that all of my team members can also use and see that list. Um, so go ahead, Katie. So once we've created our new set, I can actually open a list of sets. Um, if I look in the uh, borrowing and lending resource sharing drop down menu, there's a 
lovely little red triangle there, um, or diamond, I should say. Uh, so if I hit on that setting, it gives me a list of all of the sets and I can edit them so I can change the name or the description. I can make them private or not private, or I can delete them. I can also toggle them on and off with the little blue toggle to the left of the list. So say I want that list, it's a great list, but I only need it at a certain time of the year. So the rest of the time it can be turned off because I don't need it jumbling up my list of for my workflow um, and I don't want to delete it just yet and so I can turn it on and off as I need to um, and I can also decide how I want those lists so sets to show up for my workflow so I can drag and drop them and organize them into any order that works best for me if we can go to the next slide Katie so now that I have all of my requests in there and as um, uh, Becky showed you the user end. We can also enter requests because, you know, we all know there's lots of times where people, no matter how easy we make it, will always email us and go, can I have? <laughs> and we end up having to enter the requests on their behalf, So, which is easy enough to do. So if I go into the all active borrowing request list, and we'll just go to the next slide, then I've got a handy little drop down that says create request. So I can create it manually and I can choose either book or article and I can create a brand new request. So if we go to the next slide. So this one is for a journal or article title. And so you can see that it has a huge amount of information that you can fill in. Now, even though the right asterisk is only on the article um, title, uh, it's really important to fill in as much information as possible so that the automated system Becky was talking about where the, you create the request and it simply goes out to a partner uh, to be filled and you don't have it come back to you saying, oh, but you forgot to put in the ISSN or but hey, what volume is that? So if we fill in as much information as possible, the better. Um, if we just move ahead a little bit, Katie. So this one is for um, uh, if I select it book and so if I want it just a chapter I would also select book and I can put in the title of the book the ISBN the chapter title the page numbers all of that kind of information um, so that I have as much information as possible and if we just move to the next um, then we'll see that in the bottom half of that form I have uh, the requester information I filled in myself <laughs> so that we can see what happens. So when I ask for a physical copy, if I want a book, a physical book to be borrowed, then it asks, well, what, you know, what library is it going to be delivered to? What address is it going to be delivered to? What language do you want it in? Do I want to add a note saying, oh, by the way, I want this version and not that version, those kinds of things. And if we move on to the next one, if I decided I wanted a chapter, an article, and I chose digitally, once I fill in my name, it says, okay, well, and we know it's going by email, and all of that information gets, is there a copyright concern? But all of that information gets filled in so that we can make sure um, everything we need from the user end is filled in. If we can move on. All right, so one of the great things um, about this is that, so as Becky said, a lot of it's automated, um, but any time that there's a request that actually requires uh, staff intervention, um, all of those requests fall into the new tab under um, whichever lists, generally it's the awaiting staff action list um, that tells us there are requests there that need more information. So if we move to the next slide, I'm sorry, there's so many slides. <laughs> um, so if we open that list, um, some of the things that we're going to see in the request help us tell us what's happening with that request. We have the request status you see in the red box there. Um, and it says it's ready to be sent. So it's like, OK, I know that there's something there's something missing um, and there's a bunch of different kinds of uh, request status. So it could be um, create a boring request. Well, you know, it's been made. Um, but something more needs to be, or if it says it's local holding, okay, we own it. 
um, or uh, there's a bad citation um, and we need to correct that. Um, and as it moves through the system, they also change to the, you know, the item was loaned to the patron or we end up with a locate failed on occasion because someone within the pod or a partner in Rapido can't actually fill that specific request. So if we go to the next slide, Katie. Uh, another important thing that we see is mediation labels. Um, you'll see by the, the red box there. So these little flags appear on requests um, to let us know what exactly is missing or what is needed to be done. And some of the things that'll come up is will be missing metadata or there's a note with the request and we have to look at it or the ISBN is missing or we can fill it locally because we own the item and it's finding it in our library or um, there's a copyright issue like someone's asking for greater than 10% of the book. And so the mediation labels tell us what information is missing and the request status tells us where the request is at. So if we go to the next one. So if we go into the request, we need to know, OK, well, this particular request says the article is missing metadata. So to change that, we need to click on the edit and then that'll give us um, the form that you've seen when we created new requests. Um, but it has a little more information than just that. So under the general information tab, you're going to see all of the information for the title, the journal, the book, the ISBN, whatever's in there, um, a, a part of the request. Um, and this is where you can edit the request, change any of this information, add, delete, so that it's uh, proper information to fulfill the request. If we go to the next slide there, Katie. Okay, so then um, at the bottom half of the request, we'll see the requester's information, and then we see the mediation labels. So the article missing metadata is the mediation label that showed up. So I go in and I edit the request and I make sure the information that is needed is all there. And then to move the request on to a partner, I need to add the corresponding mediation label. So I put in metadata complete and now after I click save, it will go to the partner, it will locate the partner and off it goes and it's out of my hands. So if we just move on. Oh, of my lovely arrow, sorry. <laughs> um, so some of the typical mediation labels that you find is uh, article missing information, book missing information, and all that's needed is to um, add the missing information, edit the request, add the release label, and then hit save so that it will go on to a partner. And if we can just move forward. So um, the other tabs besides the general information tab that you're gonna find within requests when you're hitting edit, um, are the history tab, uh, the received items, attachments, notes, general messages, and the rota. So the rota is essentially the partners or the pods that the request gets sent to. Uh, relay users will know that you get to the bottom of the screen and there's this long list of things that are happening. These tabs just kind of divide that information up. So in the history, you can see a mediation label was added the reply mediation label was added. General messages allows us to send um, messages on, only with this specific request back and forth between libraries. Um, and those things get flagged so that if a library comes back and says, hey, I actually need more information, all those messages end up there. Notes um, can be system notes. Sometimes the system will add notes. Um, other libraries will add notes like, um, you know, uh, not unfilled and things like that because they pushed it to the next library for whatever reason, or we can add notes to that as well. Um, and in the attachments, you're going to see all of the emails that the system sends to the user. Um, so if they asked for something digitally, you'll see the email in there with the link to the article or the book chapter that they had requested. Uh, next slide, Katie. Okay, so um, 
there we go. OK, <laughs> so if we go into the Rota tab, um, usually uh, the automated system just finds a partner and sends it off. But when it comes up with a mediation label saying, hey, this information is missing, we need to revise it. Um, what sometimes happens is the Rota is empty and we actually need to add in the partners, which we can do. We can add in um, individual partners or we can add in the entire pod or multiple pods so that we can push the, the request out once we've done that. And once we've added those partners, we hit save and off she goes. So we can move to the next tab, Katie. Or, yeah. So um, one of the great things that I absolutely love about this is that you can create mediation labels to suit your needs. So one of the ones that I had devised was uh, consider purchase. So um, because uh, if one of our users requested a book, the mediation label automatically stops it before it goes out to any of the partners because we want to know, well, hey, if they're asking this book and this book is, uh, you know, important for the research, is that something we should actually have in our stacks? Should we buy that? So there's a whole process behind that before I add in the label, um, um, okay, we're not going to purchase or uh, we decide to purchase and we let the user know. Um, and I created a set for that so that in my borrowing list, I have a set for just book requests by undergrad students so that I can look at exactly just those um, kind of requests, even though they appear in the awaiting staff action list, um, I can deal with those separately if I wanted to deal with that workflow first. Uh, if you, we move to the next one, please, Katie. So say you get um, a request and it's ambiguous and it's you have, you're not sure what the users, the patrons actually asking for. So if you get a request where the article is not in the journal or the chapter title is not in the book, those kinds of things, you can reach out to the patron, to the user directly in the system through the query patron. So I can just send them a little, within that request, I just hit query patron. And if we hit the next slide, Katie, then I get an email message pop up and there is a bunch of email templates and you can arrange those to make them however works best for you. Um, some of the standard ones are copyright, cost, uh, general one, missing information. So I can also add an extra note um, to the user so that they know what exactly I'm looking for and I send it off and they receive an email to whatever their email is in the system. And then when I look at the request, it now has this extra little flag at the bottom underneath the mediation label called um, active query to patron so that I know I'm waiting for information from them. Pardon me, and we go to the next slide. So basically they receive this kind of form letter, which is great because it has the little note that I ended, uh, I put in, plus it has all of the details about the re item that they're requesting so they know exactly what I'm referring to because lots of people put in multiple requests. And this is all automated, which makes it much easier and it's a click of a button um, and it's a lot faster to get information from the user. So if we move to the next slide, and now when I uh, received an email back from the user saying, oh, I wanted this information or, or however it goes, I can click anywhere in the request and I'll get this little side window that pops up and I can click toggle the button saying, hey, I've received the, the, the users responded to the query. And then once I've clicked that button and I close the list, then that active um, no, query to patron disappears from the record. I revise it however I need to revise it, and off it goes. Uh, just next slide, please. And so in the in-process section, um, now that I've actually touched the request, 
uh, I can also arrange these sets so that I have a list of, okay, well, I know I've got these many requests with patron information needed. Um, I've got this many active messages from other libraries. Um, there's active notes that I have to look at and review. Um, and then, you know, hey, how many requests do I have that are older than 24 hours? What's happening with those? How many are bad citations? How many have been rejected? Those kinds of things. And I can create all of those sets um, to give me the information that I need for my workflow so that I can process the requests or keep better track of what's happening it, within the requests as they're moving through the system. Next slide, please, Katie. So um, some of the, the ones that I had mentioned before, um, send messages or notes, um, track rejected requests or bad citations. Sometimes a request goes out automatically and the lending library says, no, actually this, this citation is bad and sends it back. Um, we can also uh, track requests that have been sent to partners, track requests that haven't been filled yet and track requests that we send to Relay. This is um, a set that I also created to wherever um, any partner or pod cannot fill the request in Rapido, I can transfer the request to Relay and I can keep a running set, a list of which ones that I've transferred to Relay. So if we wanna to go to the next slide. So when I, um, okay, so we can skip this one. Sorry, I'm talking ahead of myself. <laughs> and so once I've transferred it to Relay, then I have this little item right above the request status saying that it's been transferred to Relay so that I know that request has been transferred to Relay and where it is in the process. Can we go to the next slide, please, Katie. And again, I've got ahead of myself and I did create a set. Okay, so here's one of the things that I absolutely love too now that Relay has is that we can create labels there. So to help keep track of the requests that I've sent from Rapido to Relay, I have a set there. And in Relay, you can create a label saying, hey, this request was transferred from Rapido so that you know where those requests are coming from and where they are. So we can go to the next one. The uh, last set is uh, the closed sets. So here um, you can see this kind of a large number of the all completed borrowing requests. So because we haven't had the system for a huge amount of time, um, it's basically all of the closed requests. So that means any clo uh, request that was completed and filled, that was rejected, was canceled, all of them kind of end up in there. Um, we also have a list for when they, they, they've they expired. So some, uh, if you have arrangements with the library that if it's not filled within a certain amount of time, the request expires and moves to the next library in the list, that sort of thing happens. Um, and ones that we've canceled for various reasons, when we've completed in the last few days, the last 30 days, um, and uh, things like that. And we can also create sets so that uh, it's the Grenfell completed ones, or if it's just the QE2 completed ones, or the health sciences completed ones, so we can divide it up by branch if we want. Go ahead, Katie, to the next slide. So when uh, requests are closed and they're in this list, so the request status changes, to complete it. And you can see there's now a new icon saying file available. So this was for an article. Um, it was emailed directly to the user and it's letting us know that there is a digital article there and that it's been sent off to the user. So we can see exactly what's happening just at a glance without even going into the request on what's happened. And if we go to the next slide, please. And so we're into the lending section now. So I'm going to pass that off. All yours, Perfect. Katie. Tag, you're it. Tag, <laughs> you're it. Thanks so much, Kit. Um, so yeah, we're, I'm going to briefly touch on how lending works in Rapido. Uh, running out a bit of time, so hopefully this will be quick. Uh, 
There we go. So I just wanted to show a sample of what our lending request queue looks at day to day in the health sciences library. Um, when we first come in in the morning, that's we usually have a few requests. Um, so that first one there, there's two digital articles and one physical article. Uh, that first one came from Lo Yola, Nortra team. I actually had to look up where that was, but it's in Baltimore, Maryland. And the other one is from the University of Western Australia. So I think this is a good representation of what Becky was talking about earlier, where um, we have that load bearing uh, option. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Becky, but I think it works in time zones. So where we in Newfoundland are some of the first people to wake up in North America in the mornings, uh, we usually get a lot of requests from the Eastern side of the world, like Australia, or sorry, not Eastern, Western, East, um, Western Australia, Hong Kong, China, those sort of places. And then also a lot of um, US institutions come through. Um, the second, the third request there is from a physical book from Wilfrid Laurier. They are in one of our pods, obviously, for the Ontario pod. Um, yeah, so while it says locate failed there, uh, it, uh, we actually do own that title and uh, it's on its way to Ontario right now. Um, so this was the locate feature that is an option. It's more on the borrowing side that we see, but when Wilfred Laurier was looking for a place that could fill this request for them, you can select an entire pod and hit a locate option, which uh, scans quickly the catalogs of all of the um, institutions in that pod and uh, chooses the best options that are most likely to have it. So you only end up sending the request to four or five different institutions. Um, and if that locate fails, then they'll, they'll try a few new places. And it worked out in this instance. Uh, so a few notes about lending. As Becky mentioned earlier, there's a reciprocal agreement. So we don't really charge libraries for digital loans. It is um, a loan for a loan, if you will. Um, and in terms of loaning physical books, especially with within our pod, uh, within Ontario, we only pay shipping costs. So it's really good for invoicing. We don't really uh, deal with invoicing much anymore, which is a weight off my back for sure. Uh, one of the main questions we get is if we loan ebooks. Uh, we don't loan ebooks through Rapido yet. It's just not uh, an option. We mainly loan digital articles and physical books, as we mentioned before. Physical articles in very rare cases, that hasn't come up yet, but it is an option if need be. Um, the option to loan ebooks may come in the future. I know that within the Ontario pod, they're kind of testing it. it. It works for them right now, so maybe that'll expand in the future, but right now we're just doing um, digital articles, physical books, and digital book chapters. Um, one of my favorite um, features of lending in Rapido is the requests that I get in Relay are actually duplicated and added to Rapido's queue when a physical item is shipped. I'll just show you an option of that there. So this is my all active lending request queue. It shows all of the loans that I currently have out, all of the physical books that I currently have out on loan. Um, so if it is a Rapido partner, you can see there that it is um, at the University of Calgary. It was received by that partner. But we also have these requests here, which are requests from Call Health Campus. So those are requests that I received through Relay, usually like University of PEI or uh, University of New Brunswick. And um, when I receive that loan and I ship it out, we get a duplication in Rapido just to show that, um, so I can keep track of all of my physical loans in one place. Um, so that, is a good example of what Becky was saying earlier, where we get some of the information from Relay, but not everything. So um, the way I mitigate this is, uh, well, we have the external identifier, and I know that it's a Relay request. So I usually use the notes feature that Kit uh, showed earlier to keep track of um, what library went to and when it was shipped. And just so I can, it's a little bit easier for me to mitigate. Is there anything else I wanted to add about loans? No, 
I think that was everything. I just wanted to do a quick little touch on lending. So thank you so much for spending your time with us and we're happy to answer any questions. We know that that was a lot of information <laughs> and there's actually even a lot more that we can probably share with with people who are desiring that information. So um, Wendy with Zach, I think I see your hand up. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to mention that we'll try and go through the chat questions and maybe respond to participants with answers for them in case. Um, that helps anybody. Yeah, yeah, and and the thing to to make clear is that your Alma, if you're using if you're using Alma, it already comes with a resource sharing module, and this is, for example, what most of the institutions in Ontario are using. They're using the base Alma resource sharing, and you can become a partner with another Alma uh, resource sharing library. Um, that way. Rapido is an add-on product that, you know, is giving you some additional benefits and you don't have to subscribe to it. But if you like some of the front end aspects, for example, of giving your users that information up front about requesting, that would be one reason to uh, to choose Rapido. Um, in addition or above the Alma resource sharing. And of course, if others have um, have questions outside of this, you can certainly uh, feel free to email the three of us, uh, email me, especially if it's a back end question, I can I can give you a further clarification of of what's out of the box versus what's customized and things like that. Uh, Joe, you've got your hand up. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted I had a question about the uh, the feature, the estimated turnaround time. Yes. Does is is how accurate is that or and does it if it's do do patrons respond to that or or re, do, how does how do how how do they respond to that that being there and and perhaps I mean does is it accurate and 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 if not does do they react to that or do they comment on that? Um, I'll answer one portion of that first, and then I'll let Katie or Kit uh, add uh, anything else to it. Um, in general, so basically. Um, for example, the, the Canada pod that we are part of, um, its turnaround time is about eight days. That's that's what we've agreed to as the pod. This was kind of, this was a negotiated number and it is trying to be reasonably accurate, but at the same time, it's not going to be, since we're in Newfoundland, we're probably always going to have a day or two added to that just by virtue of our geography. Um, so it, it's something that we can go back and as a group in the pod revisit and determine, OK, just how accurate has it been? Can we go and get those statistics of just how quickly has it has it arrived and adjust that? Um, but in general, it was it was an es it was a reasonable estimate to begin with. Um, in terms of people's response to it, um, I'm not aware of anyone being, you know, totally upset that it took 10 days to get here, not eight. Um, but Katie and, and Kit can uh, indicate if they've had any other experience with comments on the turnaround time, delivery time. The only time I've received comments on the turnaround time on the 24 hour window for like book chapters or articles for digital material is when I had to transfer it to Relay and someone said, hey, how come it's taking much more than 24 hours? Um, and, and that's only like usually through Rapido, it's, it's usually very accurate with the turnaround time. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. It's only on the odd occasion where I have to transfer it to Relay and go through that process to to find um, a lending library who has the material. 
Yeah, I would agree. Um, in terms of digital articles, sometimes it is so quick. Sometimes I get it within 20 minutes. There's like no problem. Um, physical books loaning, like yes, it will take a while to get here and there, but where we have an agreement of a loan time of 120 days, like when I pass a physical book off to a, a patron and I say you have this for four months, they're like, oh my goodness, I will have no need to keep it for that long, but they appreciate it all the same. So it's been working really well. And that 120 days is what the OCL institutions have agreed to give us. Um, we, uh, in terms of our settings of what we loan out, we still have it set to kind of the basic uh, CURBA agreement, which is uh, six weeks plus a six week uh, renewal. So the Ontario group is actually being more, more generous to us yeah. than what we are at the moment. But that's something that as we move forward, I'm sure we're going to reevaluate. see we're almost at time here uh the yes. recording will will be put out um you know our contact information is part of the slides um we might be able to share the slides as well um so that you can contact us but uh feel free to email if you have uh, further uh, questions we would love to have uh, more call members uh, do resource sharing whether you're using alma resource sharing or rapido doesn't matter if you're using alma and uh, and want to use this system we would love to work with you together in this system yeah. may i think I you may be hearing from us <laughs> <laughs> and may i say thank you very much for this presentation yes, you're welcome. great very good Thank you. Thank you. This has been wonderful. And I'll have the uh, recording up in the next day. And the slides, if you can send those to me, I will get those up. For sure. Yep. Wonderful.